So therefore, CBDC is important. The world is moving towards technology and CBDC is... They need no introduction, but just in case, Lehman Baird, co-founder of Hadira Hashgraph, and Brad Garlinghouse from uh, CEO of Ripple. And so, you know, it's kind of like, if we are aware of something that's going on affecting Lehman and Hedera, how could, you know, do we have a point of contact that we can reach out to the Hedera community and... What will happen is each jurisdiction will either create their own or plug into a nearby um, settlement network that, that is being developed. And, and it could be sovereign, it could be regional, it could be... Importantly, the, the infrastructure to support cryptocurrencies is the same as the infrastructure to support the, the, the whole other range of, let's call it, much more obviously societally useful digital assets. I'm not saying that, that Bitcoin's not societally useful, it's quick. Enjoy the ride, pal. If you got some baggies, welcome to the party. Welcome back to some more Moon O'Clock News. No breakfast, no coffee. Shout out to the latest side. We got Kyle in the building. Appreciate you stopping by, smashing them likeies. Stuff in some baggies. Go ahead. Throwing those moon suits. Throwing those pilot shades. Buckle up. Because the future's extra, extra bullish. Let's go full speed, full throttle into the crypto verse with the total global cryptocurrency market cap today at 2.82 trillion up about 4.4 percent in the past 24 we got xrp in that number seven spot right around 62 cents up almost five percent in the past 24 stellar xlm in the number 37 spot right around 13 cents we got btc back above to 71,546. eth right around 36 34 hundo we got flare networks right around four cents axelar dollar 64 xdc 0.045 we got songbird right around a penny stronghold 006 evernote 47 cents a how 0.1388 we got one from uphold the pop things off everyone's preparing today for a solar eclipse when they should be preparing for a moon when we got breaking the first total solar eclipse of the night has been seen in mexico the best is still yet to come we got Ripple CEO predicts crypto markets will double in size to five trillion by the end of 2024. Big Brad Garland House. We got Anthony Welfare. Crypto market will double in size to five trillion by the end of 2024. One thing that actually I'll say on the macro tailwinds for the industry, I think we'll get more clarity than the United States. Garland House said the U.S. is still the largest economy in the world, and it's unfortunately been one of the most hostile crypto markets. And I think that's going to start to change. Also, regulation then price regulation molasses we got bitcoin magazine 94 percent of the total bitcoin supply has now been issued and the having is in 11 days digital scarcity at its finest we got high vibe assets xrp holders take a listen cross-border payments is set to reach 300 trillion overnight the xrp ledger will have a massive liquidity rails in every financial jurisdiction cbdc's will need a bridge to the other side coming to cbdc's why i am saying it is very important because there are several you know there are now several new animals or birds whatever you call them they're floating around under various names somebody calls it stable coins somebody calls it uh, cryptocurrencies our point of view is that let us be very careful in interpreting and understanding what consequences they have on stable coins the basic fundamental question that arises is as the fundamental question that begs an answer is whether governments and central banks are comfortable with private currency. Currency is a sovereign function which the sovereign delegates to the central bank in countries like India. So therefore, are we comfortable with private currency? So therefore, this uh, new technology products which are coming and styling themselves as great innovation, their financial consequences, their mm. negative consequences for domestic financial stability, for global financial stability, 
for domestic monetary system, for the global monetary order, all that needs to be understood. And we have published, you know, RBI, we have myself spoken about it. So I'm not going to list out what are the potential threats. Right. They pose a threat, you know, all kinds of threats, you know, terror financing, money laundering, apart from, you know, currencies like emerging market currencies, uh, which will sort of cause uh, the central bank itself will lose control over the monetary system. There are lots of challenges and this can become these are these are highly risky now we don't want that kind of a thing in fact i on such matters whether it is stable coin or uh, it is uh, cryptocurrencies or whatever you call it i think we need to fully understand what are the risks before sort of trying to legitimize them we need to know before entering the water how many sharks are there inside the water I think that is how I would put it uh, in a very commonplace language and very bluntly. Now, so therefore CBDC is important. The world is moving towards technology and CBDCs have a major role because... Stephen Aroff, the Ethereum cartel has been dragged into the limelight and I assure you that there are more to follow suit soon. The progress we made is huge and those who are responsible for this will pay for their actions. We will not let this just be a bump in the road, but rather the end of their fraudulent practices. As with any other scam in the industry, it may take time, but we're presenting concrete evidence that will bring them down. We're on the right track and it's only a matter of time before justice is served. We got XRP drops, another classic moment of Big Brad Garland House making fun of the SEC. What we're really talking about is generative AI allowing one person to become a million sock puppets online <laughs> and share false information yeah. and try to sway opinion. This is, this is something we have to do. A president announcing that he's invading a country and then it going viral on. In a video of the SEC on the street. Yeah, the SEC yeah, yeah. announcing that they've approved the ETF, but wait, they did. Uh, but, but yeah. But, oh. Talking about that, yeah, yeah. yeah. We got Hedera and Ripple, the long awaited interview from Davos 2024. Collaboration is key. They need no introduction, but just in case, Lehman Baird, co founder of Hedera Hashgraph, and Brad Garlinghouse, from, uh, CEO of Ripple. Thank you so much, both of you, for taking the time to glad, chat with me. Glad to join. Best it's amazing to see you both in the same space. I know, man. We hadn't met until today, so it's good to be here and good to be in person. It's true. It's good to meet you. Yeah, very nice to meet you. So, Brad, you've been talking uh, this week about rebuilding trust in crypto. Can you touch on that a little sure. bit, what you mean? Well, I mean, the overall, one of, I guess, the primary theme from the World Economic Forum for Davos this year, their you know, headline is rebuilding trust, which I, I do think societally is relevant and important. As we have talked a little bit, I think it's true for crypto uh, as well. And you, know, you think about the headwinds of FTX. Uh, to some degree, maybe the headwinds around Binance and that settlement, you know, I think uh, having a lot of those things behind us, but there are also opportunities going forward in how we rebuild trust. We, we spoke uh, prior to sitting down for the cameras about uh, some of the scams that are prevalent. It's not specific to any one chain. It's not specific to any one project. And how can we as an industry collaborate, cooperate to combat I mean, there's so many scams that affect crypto and that holds back crypto. <laughs> it's a whole industry. The whole right. industry. Yeah. And so, you know, it's kind of like if we are aware of something that's going on affecting Lehman and Hedera, how could, you know, do we have a point of contact that we can reach out to the Hedera community and collaborate? And I think we haven't yet come together around that. And I think there's an opportunity to do that. I think that's amazing. It's so good to hear for the whole, for your respective community. Chad Steinberger, Singapore reports on Ripple's upcoming stablecoin launch. Monica Long, Ripple president, adds issuing our stablecoin on the XRP ledger and Ethereum will serve as a pivotal entry point to unlock new opportunities for institutional DeFi use cases across multiple ecosystems. The XRP ledger, the one true killer app, whatever it is, it's going to need a bridge to the other side. We got Subject View, CEO, founder of Quant. Expands on the unified ledger proposed by the BIS and the IMF. There'll be a common interjurisdictional settlement. One final network. question on interoperability, and it's this. There's been a lot of interest recently in solving the interoperability problem by building a new infrastructure referred to as a unified ledger or a single programmable platform. And it's been put forward in different ways by the Bank for International Settlements, by the International Monetary Fund, and uh, it originated even with the with a with a private sector initiative the regulated liability network do you see that as a good idea an obvious way forward 
Um, I, I do, and and having uh, you know a lot of experience in in banking and and payments as well. Um, what we see occurring is that there will be a, a, a common um, inter-jurisdictional settlement network, um, and that that needs to happen as an overlay to to the different systems that are being developed. So, what will happen is each jurisdiction will either create their own or plug into a nearby um, settlement network that, that is being developed and, and it could be sovereign, it could be regional, it could be um, by by institution, I mean, it, one bank might have their own, for example. So what will happen is you, you plug into your nearest connection based on your need, um, you, you either um, you know, do it yourself. You work with with your your peers and and you co-build and co-design what that looks like. Or if there's one that's existing, you, you know, the way we've got it today in payments, you could connect to an agency bank and and they onboard you to 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 the network. So we're going to see that same approach and the same adoption that's going to happen um, bottom up uh, in in terms of domestic jurisdiction connectivity, then up to regional. And then from the regional, you'll have that common layer between the different regions, which is where that settlement network comes in. Um, and yes, there's there's op opportunities to explore Enbridge, RLN and, and others. Um, and it makes sense for banks to do that because they all have a say that they have um, the, you know, the experience and, and the connectivity of, of past networks to bring to these new types of networks. Um, and, and it gives them you know a, a common way to interoperate um without forcing something proprietary uh, and it gives them the ability to do it themselves work with peers or just connect you know off, out off outsource that to um a, a provider that, that you trust and get them to to connect you to to your nearest uh, regional connection um so we're going to see that occur but what happens um in in terms of which one will will work 707 crypto standard charter ceo a much more interesting role in a crypto market as a role for a digital asset marketplace i do think that there's there's a role in the world for a well-regulated well-run cryptocurrency market there's a much more interesting from my perspective role in the world for a digital assets marketplace and the difference between the two of course is you know cryptocurrencies are not fiat currencies they're, they're not controlled by by central bankers or uh, or issued by governments or and the value is a function of what people are prepared to pay for it not what's the fundamental value of bitcoin who knows uh even with gold we can say what's the fundamental value of gold and ultimately at some point it's going to end up on your ring or on your finger or on your ear in in some markets but uh bitcoin is not going to end up uh, hung around your neck anytime soon i don't think so uh, i have no idea where the price of bitcoin is going to go i think uh, there's a group of investors <clears throat> who think that that uh, cryptocurrencies have an, have an interesting place in, in an investment portfolio. And there's another group of, of uh, speculators who like to speculate on anything that moves around a lot in price. That's okay as long as it's done in an appropriate way. And the you know, the, the infrastructure implosion that you mentioned with with uh, FTX implosion, people going to jail, etc., are indications of, of market failures uh, or regulation failures or legislation failures, uh, bad behavior that. Uh, don't detract from the whatever the underlying value of a cryptocurrency is. I'm not too focused on that, to be honest. Importantly, the, the infrastructure to support cryptocurrencies is the same as the infrastructure to support the, the, the whole other range of, let's call it, much more obviously societally useful digital assets. I'm not saying that, that Bitcoin's not societally useful. It's quite controversial, whether it is or not. I don't much care. Uh, and I think anybody that's that's buying or selling should have responsibilities to buy and sell responsibly and should be uh, we should have the mechanisms to make sure that they comply with the law we got sonar muse welcome to sonar muse red gm shares tokenizing music on the xrp ledger and allowing artists and fans and supporters alike to be actively involved in the growth of their music and ecosystem shout out to sonar muse we're going to be using the new feature for our moon party 2024 everybody who gets the ticket will get a piece of the moon party track for lifetime royalties over on sonar muse as long as they hold that token with that being said moon party tickets now live links down below for the third edition featuring tracks from bagman lady e, xrp lemmy and crown chakra we also got a sunday single to mile pool party get your tickets now links down below
We got El Crypto, All Coins, BTC. I've been sharing this chart with you for almost two years and like to repeat myself. All of our bags would be trading significantly higher in the next few months. Ignore all the noise. Bears just kind of admit that they missed a good entry point. Still on the sidelines. Dark Defender, hey there, XRP is ready for the monthly break, which is imminent. When you check out the monthly time frame below, I hear the ones XRP only goes sideways between 49, 58 cents and 67 cents, right? Yeah, yeah. I think starting this month, April, a lot of melted faces will be around. We expect this resistance to be eliminated in April and the time has come towards. I expect moving towards a dollar very soon, which will pave the way for $1.88 and 585, 589 first. Wish you a wonderful week ahead. And we got high vibe acid soon. They'll say XRB holders got lucky. Accumulating. The standard XRP, the best is yet to come. Know what you hold, know what's coming and know why. They want those baggies back the longer they take, the higher we climb. On that XRP wrist list, let a friend know that the greatest opportunity of multiple lifetimes is still at hand, but the trains left the station. Tick tock, tick tock, where will those bags be? When that regulation jar molasses finally breaks open, an XRP's true price is finally revealed. Big bags, later glitches. Rich ducks up in this place, getting bags until we space. So many NFTs while it's out of space. We richer than the mother duck, rock is headed up. Bags be getting stuffed, bags be getting buffed like crypto ready. You know what you're holding, you know what you got. This a once in a life opportunity, take your shot. Filling up more bags when it drop. SEC mad, cause we know the plot. Uh. And I'm feeling great when we finally lift off. Don't be shocked, family think you crazy. Cause you keep on getting dropped. Sacrifice it all till we hit the top. I'm staking all my coins.